We got the announcement for the next slate of Xbox Game Pass games and Halo Infinite has got a huge update. Welcome back to another video, guys. If you enjoy daily Xbox content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So we got the announcement for the next slate of Xbox Game Pass games. So I want to go over them. There's a large variety of games here. Not all of them are going to be for everybody, but there are definitely some cool ones to check out. So firstly, we have Among Us, which very popular game. I'm sure everybody knows what this is. It's available today on Xbox Cloud Gaming. So you're going to be able to play this wherever you want. And it's like a social game where you're trying to figure out who the imposter is. So Cloud Gaming is absolutely perfect for it. Ben 10 Power Trip, which is available tomorrow on Cloud Console and PC. And this is a like 3D action platformer with puzzles and stuff like that. More of a kid's game. It looks like I don't know really anything about Ben 10, but it seems like it is a children's cartoon or something like that. Broken Age, which is a family friendly hand animated adventure game with a pretty impressive cast of actors with Elijah Wood, Jack Black, Emma Samoyo. And what's interesting about this one is it was a crowdfunding campaign from Tim Schafer. So hey, it could be, could be good. You want to check that one out. Now the next one here is Firewatch available tomorrow on Cloud Console and PC. This is a game I first played when it came out, I don't know how many years ago, but I absolutely love this game. And I'm more of a person, if you've watched my channel before that I prioritize gameplay far more than I do story within video games. But this is a very, narrative driven mysterious game it's a first person mystery where you're like in wyoming and you're watching over the wilderness and making sure there's no fires and that everything is okay and you build a relationship with somebody over a like walkie talkie and it's a very very good game i absolutely loved it, it kept me engaged the entire time always wanting to know what happened next so i highly recommend checking out this game if you're really looking for just a sit back and get engulfed into a really cool narrative then we have the big one also available tomorrow on cloud console and pc which is the gunk this is a game that i've really been looking forward to and i think a lot of people have been looking forward to this we will have to wait and see how good this game is when it comes to game pass tomorrow and people jump in and start playing it but we did see more gameplay for the gunk the other day 50 minutes of gameplay looks like a fun action platformer there's upgrades there's other characters you're scanning different things within the environment so could be very good but we will have to wait and see if it lives up to what we're seeing within this gameplay because i think it looks like a lot of fun and we have another big one here mortal kombat 11 available tomorrow on cloud console and pc one of the best fighting games ever made if you haven't checked out Mortal Kombat 11, definitely check it out and play it. It is very, very good. I've played it. I haven't played it on Xbox yet, so I will probably jump in and get some achievements and just play through some of the characters within the game because Mortal Kombat's awesome. I've, I've always enjoyed Mortal Kombat all the way back to the Super Nintendo days. Then we got a couple more kids games here. Paw Patrol, Mighty Pup, Save Adventure Bay. Don't know anything about that game. And then Race with Ryan. Again, another kind of, it looks like a kid's kart racing game. Not sure about that one. And then we have Record of Lodos War Deedlit in Wonder Labyrinth. And that name is a mouthful, but this game looks awesome. I was looking up some gameplay videos of it and looks like a Castlevania style of game. Definitely in my interest. Like I love these types of games, these 2D platformers with retro graphics and rpg mechanics and stuff like that so this game looks very very cool and this is another indie game that i probably would have never heard about or even considered checking out if it wasn't for xbox game pass and then we have transformers battlegrounds available tomorrow cloud console and pc i didn't know too much about this game i thought it would have been more of like an action game but it is not it is a tactical rpg style where you have your grids and you're moving your transformers around and you have to get through the levels and take out the enemies and stuff like that. But yeah, an interesting slate of games here and definitely some good games to check out. I think the biggest one here is The Gunk. I think a lot of people are very interested in that, followed by Mortal Kombat 11. But for me, the highlight besides those two is going to be the 2D platformer here. It is a mouthful of a name, so I got to go down and remember it. And it's the record of Lodos War, Deedlit in Wonder Labyrinth. So let me know what you guys think about this slate of Game Pass games. So Halo Infinite Multiplayer continues to get updated. We know the complaints about the Battle Pass, the progression, all that type of stuff. And we got a huge update the other day. Actually, it was live yesterday, and it's awesome because you got more game modes. You get a 
different challenges and it looks like they're really trying to now flesh it out and it's becoming better and better as we continue to go on so team slayer free for all tactical slayer swat and fiesta have all been added as game modes within halo infinite you can go in there and play them right now they have made changes to the ranked and the big team matchmaking so they've adjusted the ranked matchmaking rules to increase the priority of close individual skill matches, particularly for players at the higher skill levels, which is great because when you're playing ranked, obviously you want to be playing with people who are similar to you. You don't want to be playing with people who are way better or way worse, or it's not nearly as fun. The big team battle matchmaking rules also now prioritize making matches with lower latency, which is good. And they are doubling the overall matchmaking timeout from five minutes to 10 minutes to better accommodate very high skilled players finding suitable matches i guess if it goes faster they're getting people with very different skill levels and making that time longer will help solve that issue they go over like the rank distribution you can kind of see where you are on this distribution compared to everybody else if you want to go check it out link will be in the description below they updated challenges now the challenge updates look great from what i've seen so far so they're obviously continuously fine tuning them. They're taking out bad challenges, adding in better challenges that will push the game forward and make it more fun to play. But here are some of the challenges that they have added. So there's now personal score challenges. So accumulate personal score in the specified playlist to complete, which is great because your personal score has a direct correlation on how you're helping your team win. You get points for obviously slaying people, for doing the objective and just for overall contributing to victory or if you lose as well but victory in general the more higher score you have probably the better chance your team is going to win you get now points for kills so you have to get a certain amount of kills double kills completing games just playing games on specific playlists and win so win games in specific playlists now the biggest one there or the biggest two i'd say are the personal score and the wins for me because if people have challenges to win a game they're going to play the objective that is the most annoying thing is when you're playing something like oddball and you see your teammate run by the ball when nobody's around just trying to kill people because maybe they have a gun that you get a kill with instead of picking up the oddball when i first started talking about the challenges and everything i was like hey i didn't find too much of an issue with it i was having fun playing the game within the first couple of days but i put a decent amount of hours within halo infinite and people have put in way more hours than me. So for the amount of hours I've put in, I can now start to see that there are definitely issues with the challenges. It takes away from some of the fun of the overall game when you're just focusing on trying to get kills with a certain weapon. And I almost forget those now. I don't even try to get them anymore. So for me, completing all the weekly challenges isn't going to be something I focus on because I just want to have fun playing the game. And for me, fun playing the game is winning matches and contributing to the team. Now, when it comes to the event challenges, if you remember what that first 10 Ray event, the event challenges would come up, you would complete a ch event challenge, and then you'd have to wait before you get another one by completing other weekly challenges. And it looks like they're going to be reducing that gap between finishing an event challenge, completing weekly challenges to get back to an event challenge, which I think is a good thing and to finish it off there is double xp from december 14th to december 20th which is during the hcs spotlight so hey you want to level up fast play a lot from december 14th to december 20th anyways guys that's it for me let me know what you think about this in the comments below what are your thoughts on these game pass games or what do you think about the halo infinite updates if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you're new here you like what you saw throughout this video really would appreciate you hitting that subscribe button help this channel grow help grow this community so we can have great conversations in the comments below thank you again for watching thank you for your support i'll catch you in the next video